This is Terry Howell from the Talk Back Fans Podcast, and you're listening to the Barbecue Central Show with the incomparable host, Greg Rempe. Start the game! Let's go! We'll do it live. Do it live! I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live! So to get that perfect barbecue, you use wood. Are you sure it's safe? Whatever. We put the lighter fluid on, strike your match, and... Oh. Should we call the fire department? That might be a good idea. All right, good evening and welcome to the really big Barbecue Central show. This is the show that talks about all things that are important to the world of barbecue and grilling. This show originating from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame City, Bomb City, USA, Cleveland, Ohio, the barbecue capital of the North Coast. I am your program host, Greg Rempe. Happy to have you aboard here on your Tuesday evenings, the live fire fun and revival If you want to jump in the show this evening, or if you don't know how to follow me and you want that info, here's how you do all of it. You can get in touch with the show by sending an email to Greg at the BBQ Central Show.com. Follow us on all the social media channels at BBQ Central Show. And be sure to subscribe to the show podcast feed on your favorite podcast platform. Anything else you want to find out about the show can be found at the main website, the BBQ Central Show.com, which, not letting the cat out of the bag, is really looking like there's going to be a completely new website already. I'm not even three months into the old, the, the new old website. There's a very, very definitive possibility that that's going to be changing a little bit. Nothing that you would be able to notice, but not being held hostage by weirdos and trying to upcharge me at every left turn. Dealing with reputable folks right here that appear to be in the States, and I feel pretty good about that. Notwithstanding any of that, again, everything else you want to find out about the show, the main website, thebbqcentralshow.com. And here's what's happening in case you get the newsletter, which you can't currently sign up for. We'll fix that. Don't worry about it. In about 11 minutes from now... Why not catch up with one of the most prolific competition barbecuers to ever do it, a book author, seller of rubs and sauces, and somebody that has won almost all of the most important barbecue competitions that any pitmaster would want to win. The last time we had him on, he was talking about his overall Memphis and May Grand Championship back in 2019. It is Tuffy Stove. That we'll be joining and catching up with. So looking forward to talking with Tuffy in about 10 minutes from now. Tuffystone.com, his website. In case you haven't checked that out in a while, you want to go and see a little bit of background on him. You can buy some of his stuff right there. So looking forward to catching up with Tuffy. And then we will race to the 35 past the hour interview segment and be joined by third Tuesday of the month regular guest in this segment the creator of cookoutnews.com Wes Wright that's right Wes Wright is back and better than ever my favorite guy on the internet right now cookoutnews.com I'm visiting now at least once a day if not multiple times a day because he is digging all the stories up he knows all the ways to do it And love having Wes on once a month here talking about all the breaking news in the live fire industry, uh, business, cookers, patents, trademarks, all that stuff. So look for Wes to close out the first hour in the strong way possible. And then we will move to the second hour. It is the third Tuesday of the month, as I had mentioned. So we will be joined by quarterly guest making her second appearance in 2023, Jess Priles. JessPriles.com hardcorecarnivore.com her two internet properties if you would like to check those out if you're not familiar so we'll be talking to Jess about her latest trip to Mexico we'll be talking about beef tallow we'll be talking about upcoming recipes I have the 
way to end the segment as we always do with her, which is which song of the two is better. She has fared on the correct side twice out of like 700 times. So her percentages still aren't great, but she's working up to better percentages. So Jess Pryles, 14 past the second hour, and then we'll close it out with somebody who I have literally been chasing as long as it's been since I've had Tuffy Stone on the show the last time. The owner and creator of Cooking Pellets and the associated website, cookingpellets.com, Chris Becker, will close it out with me here this evening. I have chased and chased Chris Becker saying, when will you come on? When can we catch up? What's going on in the pellet world, not only with cooking pellets, but just in general, because he's an expert in there, but he's been very busy. Pandemic has been a time for him to take stock and redo a few business models and a few business dealings. So we'll catch up with Chris Becker there at 35 past the second hour, get all the insights, see what news going on and CB a wealth of information. By the way, one of my key questions to Chris Becker so don't bother sending it to me through email or instant chat or anything like that. You have seen the, what I'll call reemergence of charcoal pellets. The last time I talked to Chris Becker about charcoal pellets, seven, eight years ago, and he quickly delegitimized them in his opinion. So I will once again, re-ask him that question again, what's going on? I believe it's the same company. Nah, I don't think it's the same company. But Royal Oak is marketing a all charcoal pellet. So we'll see if that's something that is legitimate in his opinion. He's allowed to have an opinion. And how one would go about making them if possible. Well, if you can do it, why does not he do Why does not? Why doesn't he do it? All the inside info coming up from Chris Becker as we close out the show here this evening. So, Tuffy Stone and Wes Wright in the first hour, Just Pryles, Chris Becker in the second hour. You can follow me socially on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and Snapchat at BBQ Central Show. We say good evening to those of you watching tonight through one of our video streaming platforms. You can go to Facebook and Twitch slash BBQCentralShow.com to watch, or you can take in the show via YouTube slash RD Rempe. You can also take in the show audibly through Clubhouse. Let's see if we even have anybody in Clubhouse here this evening. Uh, not currently, zero people in Clubhouse. That's fine. Just another way if you'd rather listen to us but not look at us, you do it through Clubhouse. And, of course, we do have a new YouTube poll question of the week. Not a shocker here, but I did ask, do you believe that there is a barbecue and grilling season Yes or no, and currently 100% of you are saying no. Of course there's no season. It's all the time or no time, pal. Hit the bricks because you are going out. So 100% of us are saying that there is no barbecue or grilling season. And as I try to remember here through the guests this evening, that's how we'll lead each and every segment. So let me start here this evening. We have a couple minutes before we get to the first break and then pull up Tuffy Stone. I got a number of emails over the last week from folks telling me that they did seek out the most recent edition of the baseball and barbecue podcast hosted by Jen, uh, Jen, Len, Len Hollywood Aberman and Jeff Cohen, the old coot covering why I should be in the barbecue hall of fame. I also got a number of messages asking if I put Len and Jeff, or should I say, uh, Jen and Janet up to this. I did not put them up to this in order to boost my chances into the Barbecue Hall of Fame, anything like that. Uh, rest assured, this is not what happened. These are two guys that, for whatever reason, felt the need to dedicate a whole episode to why I would lend value and legitimacy to getting into the Barbecue Hall of Fame. What do we know? You have to nominate, number one, those names that are nominated go in front of the names committee. Those names are argued for. Those names are then devised into a finalist list of nine names, which are sent out to the current living members of the Barbecue Hall of Fame, and then those folks vote for their top three, and the top three of the nine most getting votes make up that class of the Barbecue Hall of Fame. I believe actually... Last week, Robert Moss said there might be an additional living member going in, so that three might get bumped to four, but we'll get a little bit more 
assurance on that as we have those announcements coming up here with the Barbecue Hall of Fame, of course. So rest assured, uh, this was not me putting somebody up to this on my behalf. Uh, Do I care if I get into the Barbecue Hall of Fame? The overall answer is no. Of course not. I mean, really, other than being able to say I'm in it, it's not going to change my life in a tangible way. The show's not going to see a mega bump of revenue. TV offers aren't coming in. Syndicated radio offers won't be flooding in. However, I'm a very competitive person by nature. So if there's an opportunity for me to win at something, well, then, yeah, of course I want to win. So my name is nominated. There's a chance for me to win. So, yes, of course. I would love to win. But do I care? No. If you can diverge. I'm one of those unique individuals that can take their personal feelings and put them over here. And then business feelings. or We don't mix business and personal. Okay? Try not to do that. Try to have no expectations in life. And realize how much better your life just got. Why not? All right. Tuffy Stone is ready to rock and roll. We'll get to him here in just one second. I will talk to you quickly about Primo Grills, because what do we love about ceramic cookers? We love that they are fuel efficient. Yes. We love that you can achieve low and slow temperatures for traditional barbecue meats, but we also love that you can get rip-roaring hot for high-temperature grilling of steaks and other thin cuts. But what's missing in the everyday normal lineup of ceramic cookers? The real ability to do true two-zone cooking. Two-zone cooking is very important to both professional and backyard cooks alike. It's the best way to manage a fire and cook with confidence. However, getting a two-zone fire in a round ceramic cooker is not very realistic. Why? Because it's round. Enter Primo Grill in the game-changing oval design. The shape gives you the ability to execute a two-zone setup that you desire, also giving you all the other ceramic grill benefits as well. And when you break it down, there's more than 60 different ways to cook on the Primo. So you're only limited by the culinary imagination that you have. Also, everybody loves accessories. Primo has really stepped up the game over the last 18 months, brought a lot of accessories to the game to help complete the Primo Grill cooking experience. Here's the bottom line. Best ceramics in the biz? Yes. Patented technology? Yes. True two-zone cooking capabilities and multiple sizes of ovals? Oh, yes. Only to be seen at dealers, though. So... Go to a dealer near you, find one close at primogrill.com, and then visit that dealer, look, touch, and feel all those oval cookers, and then pick the one that best fits your needs, and then get all the accessories with them, because your dealer should have them all as well. Primogrill.com, follow them on Facebook and Instagram, that's primogrill.com. We're back with Tuffy Stone right after this. Stick around, be right back. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Show. Broadcasting live from the Barbecue Central Show studios in Cleveland, Ohio. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Show. Once again, here's your host, Greg Rempe. All right, welcome back to this portion of the show being brought to you by CookinPellets.com, your number one source for quality wood pellets for all your pellet-driven cookers. Visit CookinPellets.com for more information or to purchase and... The creator of Cooking Pellets will join us 35 past the second hour, so stay tuned for that. My first guest tonight on the show, more than three years ago, or almost three years ago, where we were then talking about his first ever Memphis in May overall world title. You know him as a TV personality, a book author and content creator, a purveyor of rubs and sauces, one of the most feared and respected competitors to ever start a fire. He's also a part of the class that makes up the 2018 Barbecue Hall of Fame. And little-known fact, an inaugural member of the 2018 Barbecue Central Show's Guest Hall of Fame as well. We race to the hotline, and welcome back, friend of the show, Tuffy Stone joining us. Tuffy, appreciate you making time here this evening. Are you just finding out now that you are a member of two Halls of Fame in 2018? I just did. (laughs) (laughs) What are the chances? 
You know, I don't know, but what I'm really excited about is that my audio is working. I was so nervous that this wasn't going to work. We did our little test cruise on on Sunday, and you've got this dialed in, and it was working on Sunday. It's like, man, are you going to be able to hear me? So, uh, first of all, big relief there. But so, what are you saying? I'm saying that between the two halls of fame that you got into on in 2018, Barbecue Hall of Fame. But you also got in the Barbecue Central Show's guest Hall of Fame. Which one carries more weight? Well, it's got to be it's got to be yours, Greg. Oh, I mean, it's got way much more uh, reach. It's like uh, so much fun. I get to talk to you all the time. Uh, so, you know that that email you found that goes back. I think it went back to 08. Oh wait, that was like yeah, it's like it's, we're working on fifteen years ago. Yeah, um, I think it's a. Uh, I've just been sitting here, you know, waiting, to, you know, waiting in the queue to get on your show and 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 listening to you. And, and you had me laughing and you were teaching me stuff. And, and I can see how you've made it uh, so many years. So job well done. Tuffy, appreciate that. And I want to before we dig into some content here this evening, I wanted to ask you the uh, Barbecue Central's YouTube poll question of the week, which you probably heard here in the intro, which is this. Do you believe that there is a barbecue and grilling season? Yes or no? All year long. That's right. All year long. There's no season. Currently, 100% of YouTube poll question of the week pollers are also saying, no, there is no barbecue and grilling season. It's all year long. So certainly appreciate that. We'll talk about the Memphis and May barbecue event that's coming up here in just a minute. But I do want to lead off tonight talking about the rubs and the sauces that you have for sale. And I'm especially interested in the process because... For anyone that knows you, Tuffy, you have, I don't think it's an understatement to say, exacting standards. And I figured that this is something that would have been, let's say, low-hanging fruit uh, going all the way back to the Barbecue Pitmasters days. Why did it take so long to get Tuffy's rubs and sauces? Well, I'm going to try and make the abbreviated version of this. You already know I can get really windy, so I'll kind of go into it quick. Um, I always had this this belief that just feeding people was, you know, like being a plumber, being a cook, being a chef is like being a plumber. And um, and so rubs and sauces were initially things that I did for my restaurants. I made them that way. Then eventually I started, I did everything under Cool Smoke brand. But anyways, COVID hit and it, it, it hit my restaurant and my almost 30 year old catering company really hard. And I was watching so many of my friends uh, enjoying uh, great success, providing great products. Everybody was cooking in their backyard and I had products out there, but I was like, all right, it's time to retool my career. Um, and, and I started thinking about rubs and sauces. And the first question I asked myself was, were the products that I had out there the best that I was capable of making? And I said, no, I can make them better. So I spent about six months during COVID really dialed in, tweaking, you know, I've got someone that makes fun of my recipes sometimes because I add an extra eighth a teaspoon, but I, I thought it made, you know, for a better taste. But anyways, I just retooled them all. Uh, it was really hard for me to put them under my name, uh, but I ended up having a lot of counsel from people saying that they felt like there was more people out there that knew my name than Cool Smoke. So I rebranded Brady. Uh, he did a great job with the packaging. I still get uncomfortable with, you know, being out around my rubs with uh, my name and, and likeness on them. But I think they're I think they're much better. And and I'm just going to try and continue to, you know, create more products and and hopefully people will give them a try and and. Enjoy. A lot of folks would would love seeing their name on a bottle or a, a jar of sauce being on a shelf or being distributed widely across the country, potentially across the globe. Why for you is it is it tough to see that, or what makes you uncomfortable? <clears throat> you know, it's, uh, years ago I had an opportunity to create these gift box boxes with two rubs and two sauces, and the person that wanted me to do that wanted me to put my picture and my name on there, and and it was a really great opportunity, and I was very appreciative, and I said. You know, I really appreciate the opportunity, but I said, I can't put my name in, in my picture on, on, a, on a bottle of the rub. And, and so to answer your question, Greg, it goes probably back to some teachings that my grandfather kind of, you know, instilled in me as a young man. And it was about humility. And uh, it just kind of seemed strange to me to to put my picture on, on a bottle for whatever reason. You know, I uh takes a pandemic to make me change my mind on that. But uh, anyways, it was just I felt like. Cool Smoke was just a, a fun name and uh, wasn't all about me. And and so uh, 
I don't know if I answered your question or not, but you dial in all the recipes, get them where you want. But then the next step, of course, is because uh, you're not just making these in your kitchen, you're going to probably have to find some kind of a co-packer. So how long of a process does that take? Because I've heard plenty of stories where it took forever and then maybe the relationship didn't go that well or they're trying to steer you in one direction, trying to make you compromise on stuff. What kind of a process was that like? Well, you know, so I've been making products with co-packers uh, probably since about 08, 09. So I've had a lot of experiences that way. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of things. I mean, Jess, who's getting ready to hop on. I mean, she's she's a, a, a master at this. You know, there's so many of my friends that are that have uh, that are so good at it. But, you know, I think it, it, it's there's there's layers to it. You know, what's your capacity? You know, because there's going to be some co-packers that they, they, they want 400 gallons of a sauce. So if you're a startup person, that might be too much for you. So I think you need to find a co-packer who can can deal with whatever quantity that you need made, whether it's large or small. Um, I think it's uh, working with a co-packer that when you give them your recipe or your formula is going to be able to produce it like you intend for it to be. So there's a lot of back and forth with, you know, sending a recipe, getting a product shipped to you. I With my co-packer, I actually, uh, drove down to Mississippi and spent a day in the lab just tweaking. Um, and so there's that layer of it. There's where are they located? Cause you know, you know, shipping's going to, uh, fall into this. So a lot of times it makes sense to have a co-packer that might be in the middle of the country. There's, I, I, you know, I've got a friend that does so much product that they need a co-packer on both sides of the country. And that's a good problem to have. So things like that. I mean, packaging, I mean, you might want to uh, pack in glass and so some co-packers won't pack in glass. So it, there's a lot of things like that. I, um, there are some co-packers out there that can, uh, can take your brand and then help create recipes with you and for you and uh, distribution. You can, you know, can a co-packer put you in, uh, in accounts? Do you share who you're partnered up with or do you, Keep yeah. So, uh, I mean, and I've been with a number, so, um, and, and I've had a lot of great relationships, but currently I work with uh, Reed's Foods and Tastemakers. And so they're out of Mississippi uh, and they have two facilities. So they have a dry facility and they have a wet facility. So they can do, uh, they can do sauces, they can do rubs. Um, I have found them really great to work with. Tuffy Stone joining us here on the show, tuffystone.com, his website. The rub and sauce market, Tuffy, like this is no surprise to you. It's as big as it's ever been. You can go down grocery stores now, and one full aisle has rub, sauce, seasonings, marinades, anything that has to do with live fire to add taste, flavor, or tenderness is there. How are you standing out above everything else that's now available? Well, I mean, everything you said was like really clear to me when I was retooling all my recipes. You know, I thought it might be one thing for somebody to buy one of my rubs or one of my sauces the first time. That's old branding, by the way. Uh, but uh, there we go. There you go. Um, uh, but uh, anyways, the what website are you on? Cool Smoke or? That's TuffyStone.com. Tuffy okay. In the pantry. I need to pick that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so anyways, uh, uh I thought it would be one thing to get somebody to buy my product one time, but once it's empty, will they go back and get a, you know, another one of those or will they get something else? I think I, I really got to like, you know, brands like uh, butt rub brands like meat church and, and hardcore carnivore and, you know, Malcolm Reed. There's, I mean, the list is so long of people that have done such a stellar job with uh not only growing their rub and their sauce sales but maintaining them uh you know but uh byron chisholm going to be 25 years old as a brand this year i think that's uh i think that's really amazing so uh, so for me i think it's taste um and and trying to make a really good product and then i again i got to tip my hat to some of the people i just spoke about they're creating content all the time. They're doing such a great job with their social media platforms and 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 really staying top of mind for the consumer when they go into a you know Academy Sports and Outdoors or Ace Hardware or True Value or you know a grocery store and they see that big wall of rubs and sauces that you're talking about and uh, and they're going to probably say, "Oh, I saw I saw their YouTube video or I saw their Instagram post." So I'm I'm little. 
<laughs> I'm, I'm, I should have started this about 10, 15 years ago. So I'm, I'm working hard to catch up and, uh, and, and, and trying to do a better job with all of those things, but I have a lot to learn. Outside of the fact that you are in it in business, do you feel that the rub and sauce market could be potentially oversaturated at this point, or is there never too many? Um, my guess is it could become saturated, um, and it probably is saturated. And, you know, I used to, uh, well, I, I, I like to participate in the National Barbecue Association, and I've been, you know, to many, many of their conferences, and I've listened to a lot of uh, people speak that are really smart. And I used to listen to this this person that was um, had an amazing multi-million dollar business in sauces and and I, he was so smart and I would listen to this and they're out of business now so um, you know I think uh, I think I got a lot of work ahead of me and I think probably many others do too uh, to to stay in business and be successful for for many many years to come tuffystone.com the website once again if you want to check it out see what he's got for sale and grab some up here as memorial day is quickly approaching i had mentioned at the top of the segment that i wanted to talk to you a little bit about memphis in may that's coming up here shortly i guess first questions first did you make the cut this year because that was a concern on a lot of teams yeah it's uh we did we were fortunate enough that uh we're we're coming right. back so um we're not we're not gonna have we usually have a site right on the river but they've planted a lot of trees they've done a lot of landscaping sidewalks i think uh i think their side and sprinkler systems and things like that so um so memphis may they really had to get creative with how they place teams and uh so we're not going to be on the river this year but i'm going to be uh i'm going to be i think i'm right beside uh uh, Lily's cue. So we always, uh, we always have a, a good rapport and we'll, we'll, we'll be there. So we're going to be in shoulders. We have to be loaded in on Wednesday. Um, we've got a bunch of festivities coming up, but we will, uh, we'll cook our big meat. We'll probably trim and prep on Thursday, light our smokers on Friday night. Uh, you know, the drill, uh, Saturday, we'll do a blind box and then we'll do three onsite, uh, judges where you talk about your processes and present and then everybody sits around and waits and the top three and shoulders, ribs and whole hog will find out who made finals and then they'll all go head to head, all nine of them. How do you gear up for something like this? You're not a guy that's doing 30, 40 KCBS contest anyway, not that this is a KCBS judged event, but just to get some rust knocked off as it were, or have you done it so much and for so long and you've been very successful at Memphis and May where it's just second nature. You know, in in my kitchen, in my other room, I have the uh, two files from Memphis and May, the two previous years. And, and so stacked on top of each other, they're about this thick. So uh, Leslie and I, my wife, we started pulling the equipment uh, yesterday from Memphis and May. So we're a month out. So we're starting to pull our gear. Memphis and May's uh, got a lot of equipment that I have to bring to that that I wouldn't have to bring to a KCBS contest. So there's a lot of logistics. It's about 12, 13 hour drive for so that mm. that provides a little bit of stress, you know, towing gear and box trucks and all of that. Um, and so and, and you're right, it's not I, I can do a KCB like I can tell you my timeline for KCBS right now because I've been doing the same one for so long. So I light my fire at two. I put my meat on at three, you know, that, that, with Memphis and May, I have to go back to my notes. Um, we'll actually, we'll have a zoom call Thursday night with the team. Uh, I have to bring in more people for this. I did cook Memphis and May one time just doing ribs with just my father and I, and that was, that was a big challenge. That was a lot of work. Um, but there's so much that happens with Memphis and May with platters and China and, and, linens and all this stuff and so we'll have a we'll have a zoom call on uh on thursday night at five o'clock and kind of talk through it all and you know just i got lots of sayings one of my sayings is plan your work and work your plan and so we'll we'll do it i you know and i get a little nervous greg you know it's like uh but i i I do some of my best work with a little bit of, you know, uh, edge to how I'm feeling. So tell we get new listeners all the time and I just don't assume that everybody knows who you are and what the backstory is, but, uh, your dad, George passed away uh, like three years ago. And, uh, during the height of the pandemic, of course, things weren't 
normal for a lot of people during those times, of course. And for anybody that knows you, knows the team, your dad was a staple of competitions. So you were able to share your biggest successes in barbecue, probably some of your biggest heartaches in barbecue too with your dad. So could you take a minute and uh, talk about the relationship you had with him and what it was meaning to you to be able to share those special moments with him? You know, uh, Greg, uh, my truck's right over there in front of my house and, and on the, on the, on the dash of my truck is, uh, my dad's lucky hat. So that was the hat that he was wearing when we were fortunate enough to win so many of these contests that we've been able to win together, including Memphis and May. And, um, you know, it's funny when we would, uh, get a hotel room, he always got the bed closest to the, the restroom, but I always got the one furthest away. And so, I never ever sleep in that bed uh, close to the to the to the bathroom. But my dad, you know, you mentioned about uh, me being inducted into the Hall of Fame uh, back in '18, and uh, they presented the award at the American Royal, and so I got up to speak, and I looked out at my father who was in the uh, uh, and you know sitting in a chair, and I said, "Dad, we've come a long way since I wrecked your truck when I was 16, but." Dad used to always say he was the luckiest dad in the world. He was so proud. We would pull up at a filling station to fuel up, and the pit would be behind the RV. And someone would say, that's a nice pit. And then my dad would go into this dissertation about all the, the contest that pit had won, and we'd get back in the vehicle to leave. And I'd look at Dad and say, all you had to do is say thank you. you know. But he was very <laughs> proud. We had, we had a lot of great times together. Tuffy Stone joining us here on the show. TuffyStone.com is his website. Uh, Tuffy, anything else you want to uh, hit here before I let you go? And uh, I want to have you on coming up. I don't want three years to elapse before we come back no, on because I, I know you got a lot of content and all that stuff. But uh, anything else on the way out? No, I just want to thank you for for being uh, a place that us people that love to cook with fire could come to for 15 years. Uh, uh, you know, to enjoy that fellowship. You know. I don't get to go to competitions like I once did. And when I do, it's like, I get to, I get to see old friends and it's like seeing family, but you know, being on your show, I think I was telling you this, we were doing our test run uh, on Sunday and I was just talking to you and, and seeing you on screen. And it just, uh, I don't know. It's uh, my dad used to always say the best thing about barbecue is the people. And I think, I think you keep that alive. So thank you. Tuffy, appreciate the time and we'll do it again soon. Thanks so much. All right. Thanks Greg. You got it. Tuffy stone right there. Barbecue Hall of Famer, Barbecue Central Show's guest Hall of Famer as well. And again, the website, TuffyStone.com. So if you're looking for new rubs and new sauces to try, or if you haven't tried them yet and they've been on the radar, why not shoot on over there and pick some up right now at TuffyStone.com. Great interview. If you missed it, podcasting, don't worry. It'll be up tomorrow. Wes Wright is ready to go. Talk to Wes here. We'll ask him the... YouTube poll question of the week. Hey, Pits and Spits is building some of the best looking, best cooking smokers on the market today, offering a full family of products, including traditional offset smokers, wood pellet grills, charcoal grills, travel grills, combination pits, fire pits, and much more. Pits and Spits has been one of the only American fabrication shops that's focused on smokers and grills for almost 40 years. Why is that important? They're able to put an emphasis on quality and design, local source materials, unmatched attention to detail. From the fully welded barrels to the heavy gauge steel, they bring both function and beauty to life. Pits and Spits building every product with the intention that it's getting passed down for generations to come. Whether you're in the backyard or in the competition circuit, you're going to be able to take that barbecue and grilling game to the next level because there is a product for you. Want more information? Check them out at this website, pitsandspits.com slash BBQ Central. That's pitsandspits.com, all spelled out, slash BBQ Central. And use promo code to check out BBQ Central when you spend $500 or more for a free spice pack. Easy to do. Spend $500 on accessories or buy a cooker, which you know is going to be over $500, and then enter promo code BBQ Central at checkout, and you can get hooked up with that free spice pack. Wes Wright is ready to go. Stick around. We'll be right back.
Howard Stern, Jim Rome, Dan Patrick, and Greg Rampey. The Mountain Rushmore of talk show entertainment. Now, let's get back to the Barbecue Central Show. All right, we are back. Programming note before we get with Wes Wright. Uh, next week's show, which you would find on the 25th, is going to be one day later on Wednesday, the 26th, the following week, which I believe ends up being that first Tuesday in May, will also take place on the next day, Wednesday. I think that's May 3rd, May 4th, something like that. Oddly enough, uh, both times will find me in Texas in successive Tuesdays trying to come back and both landing flights are not going to be time conducive to doing a show on Tuesday. So I've cleared it off with everybody that's already scheduled to be on that show instead of Tuesday next week and the week after all shows will be on Wednesday for those two weeks. They will be live. So don't worry about that. Yes, Bill, we will do it live. So just a programming note up there so you can schedule your adjustments as needed. My next guest tonight, the creator of cookout news, Dot com and the third Tuesday of the month regular guest here, 35 past the first hour. Talking about all things important to the world of live fire, it's my pal Wes Wright. Poll question, hey, of, poll question of the week time. Right out of the gate. Yes or no? There is a barbecue or grilling season. Uh, I'm going to say no on that. I live in Michigan. Well, uh, look, shockingly, as I go to the results here on YouTube, 88% say no and 12% say there is, which is a bit shocking because all through Tuffy Stone segment, it was 100% no. Everybody's saying that there is indeed not a barbecue and grilling season. It's all year long. This is what we do. We are the, I figured it would have been towards 100% here. It was kind of a trick question, but I'm once again shocked by the results. However, Wes Wright is right here from Cookout News. Dot com. A lot of things to tackle here off the rip. So let's start with Halo. I guess for the folks that don't know, kind of a newer name, a uh, brand that's out there. So uh, if you could give us maybe a quick overview on what Halo is all about, and then we can talk about the thing that really seems to be bringing their uniqueness to market, which is battery-sized uh, or full-size battery-powered pellet cookers. Yeah, sure. So Halo is a pretty new company. Um, it was started by a guy that used to work for uh, Blackstone. He was like a VP of product or something over at Blackstone. Uh, they came out with a pizza oven first, uh, then a, I want to say a portable battery powered pellet grill, and then a, a little griddle. Um, but everything they do, it, you know, they try to find some innovative approaches and don't just do everything else that's on the market. So, you know, it's a cool company. If you haven't seen them before check them out because they have a lot of great features and you know they they think through some problem areas that people run into with cooking and they they come up with unique solutions for them so i'd mentioned the full-size battery powered pellet cooker your general thoughts on that i think it's a good idea it, it is annoying to run an extension cord to your your pellet grill and i don't know if you have little kids like me i'm worried about them tripping over it and stuff like that so you know, and it runs like 15 to 20 hours. So you could do a brisket cook on it, which, you know, I don't know what else you'd cook much longer than that on a pellet grill. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's a good idea. And, you know, we're going to see more of that, I think. And uh, even tomorrow, you're going to see Gorilla Grills is going to release a uh, just a battery pack, branded Gorilla Grills battery pack for grills, like an outdoor power station that's battery operated so, so it's, is the it's thought on that point. that there's everybody's going to be using the same stuff so you can just make accessories to go regardless of if it's yours or not yeah i think they're just rather than creating an integrated you know version of one of their grills they just thought we'll just create our own you know power source even though there's a million power sources on on the market Traeger also has a battery-powered pellet cooker in the works. I don't know where it is in development at this point, but uh, it's it's a bit different from a a powering setup. What can you tell us about that? Yeah, that that one's cool because it. Uh, you know, we'll see if they ever come out with it. You know, I think I said in my article it'd be a couple years out because of where they are in like the refresh cycle, and they bring things to the timberline first and then trickle them down. Uh, but that's. 
you know, same kind of thing like what Halo did where it has a, a, a battery pack, but the difference is, is they have a secondary battery in their design. So that way, when you change out a battery, it'll run for like 15 minutes off the secondary battery to give you time to change out the first so you have an uninterrupted cook. Uh, you know, that only comes into play, though, if you cook longer than what you need on your battery pack. And also kind of a quirk on that one, too, uh, is they said they'd that they have designs of like using battery packs from drills and things like that, you know, from other companies. And I, with how, I don't know, Traeger is, I can't imagine they'd not have a proprietary battery pack, mm-hmm. but it's a neat, neat idea if they could. With the emergence of battery powered cookers coming into market from Halo, Traeger, you know, a couple others, do you see this being a new trend where most of the other OEMs now are going to feel obligated to bring some kind of a battery powered cooker to market full sized or not? Yeah, I think over the next few years, we're going to see, you know, every, every company kind of <laughs> that has pellet grills come out with it. Uh, Pit Boss, they had a portable uh, battery powered pellet grill this year. You know, once somebody does a feature, a lot of other companies copy it. But, you know, I mean, you have a Timberline, right? Do you think you'd use battery power? Uh, I mean, honestly, I wouldn't even think about it. I have... My kids are older, Wes, so I'm not worried about them <laughs> tripping. Uh, but I would say I've I've had no issue running power cords. So, and, and it never has seemed like it's been that big of an inconvenience. I was worried initially when I, so not to go into the weeds like this quick, but I hated the thought of pellet cookers long, long time ago. I thought it was cheating, stupid never catch on, blah, 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 totally wrong. And then uh, Gorilla Grills sent me one in secret a uh, hundred years ago and said it was like that, the round OG, um, the yeah. one that they saw, and said the guy, uh, Mark Graham, sent, sent it to me and said, just use it. Don't ever talk about it. Just use it. Tell me what you like. Tell me what you don't like. Check in with me, you know, a couple times a month. And and I, I had to keep it a secret. I was like, oh, my God, I had the secret lover off to the side, which was a pellet cooker, because I'm talking shit about it on the show all the time. But quickly, I fell in love with its convenience, and it was putting out really good product. Um, I was concerned with using it in the rain or, or leaving it out, this and that. But uh, over time, uh, because I've become grizzled and jaded, I, I, st- I just didn't even cover one of my new pellet cookers just to see like what would happen. Would it leak into the, in the pellet hopper? And the thing has been through full winter, has been through monstrous rainstorms and nothing has happened to it. I leave the plugged in, doesn't short out, nothing. So they seem bulletproof. Long way to go to say it's not like I'm going, well, I would love it even more if it had battery, but certainly easier to take around, move around the house. I don't have to be tethered to an outlet now. So I can certainly see the value in it, but it's not putting me over the top. Like also, if it doesn't have tech on it, I wouldn't not buy it if it was a good cook. Right. Yeah. It, it, I kind of think that's where I'm at too. I, all my grills I store in the garage and I'd wheel them out when I use them. Well, almost all of them. Uh, but you know, it's kind of a nice to have, but not an essential, you know, Rectech released two new portable grills recently. What do we like about? Them? Um, I, do I'm we? not crazy about them. <laughs> I, I, I like Rectech as a company. I think they make, you know, they use a lot of stainless in their products. They have s- some cool stuff. Uh, but all it is, it's really what they have just smaller in two different smaller sizes. So I guess that's appealing. Um, I'm not really in love with portable pellet grills as it is because they weigh like 100 pounds because of all, you know, the, you have an auger and, you know, all the electronics. They're, they're not light to lug around. Uh, you know, I have a master built, uh, their portable charcoal gravity series that's way lighter. And I would use that if I was going anywhere. So I, I don't, I don't really understand, you know, I, I think it's probably a cheap, easy product to come out and that's probably why they did it. Cause I, I would suspect they're having some problems, you know, they change CEOs and everything like that, but it, you know, that's not to say it's a bad product. It's just what, it's what they already had out just smaller. That's a company also that was purchased or they sold to a uh, private equity or, or whatever it is. is that that was a good move for them to do. Uh, I, 
and I say this as a guy that used to work in private equity, but I, I don't love it when, when I'm not a big fan of private equity. Uh, they did. They sold out, I want to say in 21, end of 21, something like that, maybe 20. I don't remember. But uh, they sold out within the last few years. Um, and then the founders, there were, you know, the two f- co founders, they left the company. Um, and there was a press release where they got some guy from, you know, used to work at like PepsiCo a long time ago and stuff like that. So I just get a l- little worried when. Uh, I see uh, new CEOs that aren't from the grilling industry and are just from like consumer packaged goods or mm. things like that, where it's almost like, you know, it's just like a product like any other. And I think there's a lot more passion to it. That's that's just my take. And also there's a little thing, but I never like when private equity firms put out press releases and then they just talk about themselves rather than the company, which they did in that. So that always makes me wonder like who's actually running it. One of the most popular segments in Live Fire continues to be pizza. So general thoughts on where you see the pizza oven outdoor segment heading this year. I think it's you know, that and I think that's one of the hottest segments this year. I think you're going to see even more people buy them. Um, you know, Lowe's is with Uni and then Gosney is being sold at Home Depot this year. I don't know if it'll make it in stores or not, but at least online for further distribution. Um it, it seems like a lot of people I talk to that aren't even into grilling or like pizza ovens, mm-hmm. you know, and it's a product that if you have a grill, you can also have a pizza oven. So I think that we're only, it seems like a lot of people like them and I think there'll, there's way, way more room to grow in that area. You'd mentioned two names that I was just going to ask you about. One, Gosney, they had released the, the mantle, which looks like it hooks on to either the rock box or the dome to give you a little bit more accessible and workable space. They also unveiled the new color of pizza cooker, which was yellow. They really appear to be coming on strong in this segment. So where do you see them currently versus one of those founding fathers, that being Uni? I think they're a lot smaller than, than Uni. Well, you know, I think they're... Is Uni big? Probably. I, I, I'm i going to get this wrong, but I want to say they're like $300 million in revenue or something mm-hmm. like that. They were in 21, and I, they said they had a little growth in 22. So they're around there. And I, I bet you Gosney isn't even at $100 million. I bet you they're probably 50, 60 is my guess if I'm just throwing numbers out. Um, so it, there's a big difference. Um, and some of that is because they've had distribution through Lowe's, and they're just like the name in pizza ovens. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I you know, I like what Gosney's doing. They also just came out with some events where they're bringing out chefs to, you know, to, to cook for you and you can interact with them. I always think stuff like that helps create your brand and it's cool. Um, they, they sent me a yellow, uh, rock box that I actually just took out today and started testing it out. You like the yellow? I have, yeah, it's a nice color. I mean, it's not going to, I don't know if I'll buy specifically for a color. That's just not me, but it's, you know, it looks good. Um, and I also have a, uh, an uni too. So, uh, you know, they're both, they, they both make really great products. You know, it's either one's it's good. This is just a business question, but as we talk about some of these company, uh, Gosney, for instance, a uh, Traeger, Thermoworks, Rectech, I think, uh, reload there, Utah. Is there something yeah. going on with Utah that I missed? Is it a great uh, business destination? I know when Pit Barrel moved out of uh, Denver for or wherever they were in Colorado a uh, number of years ago, they went purposefully to Kentucky because Noah said that the, the business advantages in Kentucky were conducive to them coming there because I was like, why the hell would you go to Kentucky uh, of all places? And yeah. so he explained it made sense to me, but is Utah a state like that? I, I don't understand the reason behind it, but you can add to that list Camp Chef and Blackstone are both in Yes, Utah. that's right. I, Blackstone. Yes. <laughs> yes, right. Everybody's in Utah. What's I, the I don't deal? I don't know. I don't know. That's that's like the outdoor cooking hub of the US though, for some weird reason. I, I don't know the reason behind that. Um but it you know, it'll be worth taking a trip out there, I think, maybe <laughs> to to visit some companies. Maybe one of them can fill me in on why they're all out there. The other smoking hot section of live fire continues to be flat top or griddle, depending on what word you like. Where do you see the griddle market heading through the rest of the summer? Are we tapering or are we still on the rise? I think we're still on the rise with uh, wow. Weber, Weber and Traeger releasing new products. That's going to grow the overall segment because, you know, just the marketing in general, even if it doesn't go to them, it's, it's going to keep, keep growing. And it's like a pizza oven. If you have a grill, you can still buy a griddle. Um, 
and you know people like also like it you know because they like breakfast which you know isn't historically something with grills so it's it's a whole another segment of people that might be interested in one um i i think it's just going to keep growing i'm getting a question in the instant chat i don't know if you know this or not but there's obviously a lot of foreign made pellet cookers are there any american made pellet cookers that you know and certainly there's going to be some kind of componentry that you're probably going to have to get over from China Electrics or the the PIDs or whatever. It probably can't all be American made, but are there any that you know of that are you know mostly North American or American made? Yeah, it's a it's a good setup because actually Pitts and Spitz, their Maverick, is all American made. And what I was, <laughs> yeah, it's it's a solid product. And what I was blown away by when I went out and, and met with them is even their controllers they sourced from the U S which I thought was like unheard of to get a controller from the U S I don't know if they're, I think they're a hundred percent U S made if I'm not mistaken. What you about know. Mac M A K? Um, I'm not sure. I, I don't follow them that much, mm. but I, you know, there are some smaller names that are probably American made, but you know, the biggest one I can think of is pits and spits. Mm. That's, That'd be my go-to for an American uh, pellet grill. You had talked about Traeger and Weber helping increase the market share just by name. Are you getting any feedback? Are you hearing anything on those releases from either company? I haven't heard anything on them. I went and just checked them out at my local, you know, Ace Hardware just to play around and feel them. Uh, yeah, they're they're <laughs> they're they're more griddles. I don't know. Um, they're <laughs> the, the the Weber is. I think. I don't know. You're going to get a lot of people that are Traeger fans that like the flat rock and you know, get, the, the knobs feel solid and they have nice design elements like a lot of Traeger products do. The Weber's at a, you know, lower price point. So I think they're, you know, it, it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. I don't, I don't, I'm not sure what my crystal ball says yet on how those will do, but, um, I think that, you know, definitely like even at, when I went to the hardware store, those are front and center. So yeah. You know, people are buying them, I'm sure. Well, forget crystal balls. Let's talk about your wallet. If you're going in and they're both there, which one are you buying, the Weber or the Traeger? Uh, so I, I'd have a hard time spending 900 bucks on a on a griddle with just the same features that, you know, every other griddle has. I actually just ordered a Blackstone this week. You know, they had griddle week with them, some discounts. Yes, so. how about that? <laughs> Good for you. Yeah. Yeah, it actually, that's where my money went, you know, this week. Um, but, you know, and the Weber is kind of in that that price price spot too. But if I'm spending, you know, 900 bucks, I'd then look at Halo, which they have a lot of the features Traeger does and more, or spend a little more. And I want to say 13, 11 to 13, you know, they run sales. Blackstone has griddles with like air fryers and stuff like that that are pretty cool and have some of the features too, like, you know, wind blocking, even though I've never had that as an issue, but you know, stuff like that too. So I, I don't know. It's a weird price point for me to be at 900 bucks, but you kind of do the same as every other griddle. Let's talk about that premium market that you had just mentioned. So thousand dollars or more, it doesn't have to be in stores. It can be anywhere. What are the best options currently available? And should you also be looking at brands like uh, Evo in this category? Yeah, Evos are pretty expensive. I want to say they're like four or five grand, but um, in the cart they, they can be less expensive. I think maybe twenty five, oh, right? hundred bucks, three thousand, okay. but definitely expensive, no doubt. Yeah, a lot of those two, you know, I, I, especially if I was making like an outdoor kitchen as opposed to just you know having a standalone griddle, I'd, I'd want to get that or I want to say Coyote or some other brands. They have griddle products, if I'm not mistaken, that are nice like that. Um, it still though it, like a griddle is kind of a griddle to me a little bit I, unless i'm building an outdoor kitchen I, i'd have a hard time spending more than you know you know 500 bucks and get a pretty nice griddle uh charbroil's edge is looking to add a power booster for those that aren't familiar the edge is of course the full-size electric cooker that we've been talking about on the show the one that i had staked my reputation on saying that this was going to cause a revolution of all the other grill manufacturers to bring full-size electric grills to market, which technically they haven't, but we still got some time left here in 2023. What do you know about that power booster? That's a really cool idea. It, it sounded like, you know, you experienced when you went to HBPA as people said, oh, there's, you know, it's too hard with the 110 or, 
you know, voltage that we have. Um, but the power booster is a way around that. So, it, you know, it's, it's being creative with what you have and it's using either a battery, a DC battery or a, uh, a capacitor to store energy. So that way you can use it to run another set of coils, or you can use it to get a little extra, uh, power through warm up or for searing things like that or even extra extra grilling space it's just gives you that extra power you know when you need it as opposed to just relying on what comes out of a standard outlet it's a, it's a cool solution to that problem one of the things that i saw on charbroil's website was they are bundling the full sized electric edge and one of their four burner griddles together. So I would imagine that might be the 36 inch uh, cooking surface size. If you're wondering, $939 and 17 cents weird price, of course. However, it's saving you about $400 if you were going to buy them separately, a good idea and B something else that somebody is going to copy. I think it's a great idea because if, you know, like, like I said before, if you get a griddle, you want a grill too, right? So if you, if you have neither, you can get everything you need in one package and save some money. And, you know, it, it's, I think it's a great idea. I, the other companies that could do it, you know, would be like, I guess Weber or Traeger now. Um, I, I'd be interested to see if Weber tries doing that, but it's a good way to one, not only get people to, to, start using the edge who are a little apprehensive because then you have a griddle too in case you don't like it but um also you know it, it's a way to to move their their griddle and let people know you have it for i mean 900 bucks you get a grill and a griddle that's not a bad deal Wes right joining us here on the show from cookoutnews.com Wes, last question before i let you go and i want your honest opinion on this if you went to a steakhouse restaurant and ordered medium rare and this showed up would you be happy with it? Would you send it back or what? <laughs> yeah, that's a little under medium. I'll tell you that. Um, I'm not, <laughs> I, I, uh, I worked in food service. I'm not a send it back kind of guy unless something's really terrible or if my wife bugs me about it. Um, so I, I would probably just eat it. I'm not that picky, you know, if it's, if, I'm not even if it's overdone. I'll just say yeah, that you know it's not what I wanted, but it's not going to ruin my life. So, but I'm not really a send it back kind of guy. All right, go to cookoutnews.com. See what's happening with Gorilla Grills tomorrow, as Wes had mentioned there a couple minutes ago. And be sure you check it out multiple times a week. He's always baking great news, and you can find him right here on the third Tuesday of the month here, 35 past the first hour. Wes always appreciate the time and the info, and we'll see you again next month. Yeah, thanks for having me, Greg. It's Wes right right there. Again, cookoutnews.com, the website, and check it out. I'm telling you, there's so much good stuff. And he's got the uh, weekend refuel. So if you put your email in there at the top of the page, over the weekend, you get a recap of all the great stories, cookoutnews.com. If for some reason you forgot to go there, you can get caught up before the new week starts and all the new business is levied into the live fire industry that Wes is covering. Let's wrap up the first hour. Stick around. We'll be right back. Continuing to produce incredibly mediocre content in an exceptionally professional way. You're listening and watching the Barbecue Central Show. Once again, here's your host, Craig Rampey. And we thank Wes Wright for joining us last segment, cookoutnews.com, his website. So make sure you check that out. You are visiting frequently, as I had mentioned before. Huge first hour, Tuffy Stone joined us for the first time in three years. So we were able to catch up with him a little bit, talk about the upcoming Memphis and May championship, a little history about him and his dad running the competition circuit trails. And talking about those rubs and sauces that he has finally brought into market. So, tuffystone.com if you want to check those out. But we have a huge second hour already geared up for you. So, if you're just tuning in now, make sure you're staying for the second hour. Don't worry about missing the first hour. We're being in podcast right now. Or we're recording right now for a podcast, which I'll tell you about here in just a few moments. By the way, some of you reacting to the steak picture that I showed Wes on the way out. Saying... That thing is still mooing. I know. (laughs) I'm more like Wes than not in being 
it has to there has to be a pretty big food event for me to hail back the server and either send it back or because it's overdone or it's not done enough most of the time I'll gut through it but that's going back for me that's that's as rare as it gets and maybe whatever's the blue like we were talking with Derek anyway we are pointing to the second hour of fresh libations stick around we'll be right back